Hi, and welcome to episode 15 of Hans Christian Andersen series of the Silent God of Water 20 story time. And it's now time for me to read The Darning Needle. There was once upon a time a darning needle which thought itself so fine that it imagined that it ought to be a sewing needle. Take care that you hold me tightly, said the darning needle to the fingers which took it up. Do not drop me, for if I fall on the ground, one will certainly not find me again. I am so fine. That's what you say, said the fingers, and seized her round the body. Look out! I am coming with a sweet! said the darning needle, and dragged a long thread after it. But there was no knot in the thread. The fingers directed the needle straight towards the cook's slipper. The upper leather was torn and had to be mended. That's degrading work, said the darning needle. I shall never get through it. I shall break, I shall break. And really it broke. Did I not tell you so? said the darning needle. I am too fine. Now it's good for nothing, said the fingers, but yet they had to hold it. The cook fixed a knob of sealing wax to the needle and fastened her neckerchief. with it. So, now I am a scarf pin, said the needle. I knew very well that I should come to honour. with When one is worthy, one gets on in the world. And then it laughed to itself, but one never sees when a darning needle laughs. It sat there as proudly as if it was in a state carriage and looked in all directions. May I ask if you were made of gold? It inquired of the other pin, its neighbour. You have a bright exterior and a head of your own. Although it is but small, you must endeavour to grow, for it is not everyone who receives a knob of sealing wax. Thus saying, the darning needle raised itself so proudly that it fell out of the neckerchief, uh, of the neckerchief. Straight into the sink with which the cook was rinsing down. Now I am going on my travels, said the darning needle. I hope I shall not be lost. But it was lost indeed. I am too fine for this world, it said when it was lying in the gutter. But I know who I am, and that is always a little pleasure, and the darning needle kept its proud bearing, and did not lose its cheerful temper. All sorts of things passed over it, chips, straws, and bits of old newspaper. Look how they sail, said the darning needle. They do not know what is underneath them. I am sticking fast here. See, there is a see. There goes a chip, thinking of nothing in the world but itself. A chip. There is a straw drifting by. How it turns round and round. Don't think only of yourself. You might easily run against a stone. There floats a piece of newspaper, and although. What is printed upon it was forgotten long ago. It gives itself airs. I am sitting here patiently and quietly. I know who I am and that I shall continue to be. One day something lay by the side of it which glittered and so splendidly that the darning needle thought it was a diamond. But it was only a piece of broken glass bottle. And because it was so bright, the darning needle spoke to it and introduced itself as a scarf pin. 
I suppose you are a diamond? Yes, something of that kind. And then they both thought each other something very precious. They spoke of the pride of the world. I have been in a girl's box, said the darning needle, and this girl was a cook. She had five fingers on each hand. But I have never seen anything so conceited as these fingers. And yet, they were only there to take me out of the box and put me back again. Were they very distinguished? asked a piece of glass. Distinguished? said the darning needle. No, but haughty. There were five fingers all born. Fingers. They held proudly together, although they were of different lengths. The first, the thumb, was short and thick. It stood out, the, it stood out of the rank and had only one joint in its back and could only make one bow, uh, one bow. But it said if it was cut off a man's hand, he could not be a soldier. Sweet Tooth, the second finger, was put into sweet and sour dishes, pointed to the sun and the moon. And over the heads, of all the others. Old Rim, that gold rim, the fourth, wore a golden girdle round the waist, and little Playman did nothing at all, and was proud of it. They did nothing but brag, and therefore I left them. And now we sit here and glitter, said the piece of glass. At the same moment more water rushed into the gutter, it overflowed and carried the piece of glass away. So now it is promoted, said the darning needle. But I remain here. I am too fine, but that is my pride. And I have good reason for it. And it sat there proudly and had many great thoughts. I am almost inclined to think that I am a child think I am a child of a sunbeam. I am so fine, it seems to me as if sunbeams were always looking for me. Here under the water also, I am so fine that my mother cannot find me. If I had my old eye, the one that broke off, I believe I should cry. But I shall not do it. It is not considered good Reading to cry. One day, a few urchins lay grabbing and grubbing in the gutter, where they found old nails, farthings, and such like treasures. It was dirty work, but it caused them great pleasure. Oh! cried one, who had pricked himself with the darning needle. Look what's a fellow! I am not a fellow, I am a miss! said the darning needle, but nobody listened to it. The sealing wax had come off, and the needle had turned black. But black makes one look thinner, and therefore it thought itself finer than ever. Here comes an eggshell drifting along, said the boys, and they stuck the darning needle firmly into it. White walls, and I am black myself, said the darning needle. That is very becoming, now one can see me at least. I wish I may not come seasick, become seasick and break. But it did not become seasick, nor did it break. It is a good thing against seasickness, if one has a steel stomach and does not forget that one is something better than a man. Now my seasickness is past. The finer one is, the more one can bear. Crack! cried the eggshell, as a heavy cart went over it. 
Good heavens, said the darning needle, how it presses. Now I shall become seasick after all, I am breaking. But it did not break, although the heavy cart passed over it. It lay there full length, and there it may stay. And that was the darning needle. We turn really sweet in the next episode with big claws and little claws. <laughs> Until then, bye bye.